and Caroline. I tend to think we have one of the best in the business. It's called Skin Medica. It's up here. We've got samples to show you. We've gone through many different uh, uh, evolutions in our uh, discovery for uh, the perfect uh, skincare products. We've tried them over the years. We've finally come up with uh, come down to Skin Medica. I think it works very effectively. I think you'll be impressed if you try it. Um, you know. One of the things that Skin Medica treats is hyperpigmentation. You know, these are very beautiful girls, but the freckles kind of, ooh, ooh, what's that, right? So this is kind of an exaggeration of what the sun damage can do, you know. If they keep this up for 20 or 30 years, boy, their, their face is going to be destroyed, you know. Um, Irish skin is not meant to be in the sun, right? It's meant to be in the dark, gloomy places, you know. <laughs> um, this is the hyper, hyperpigmentation kit. Uh, it's got various and sundry things in it. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. One of which is a uh, skin bleaching agent called uh, hydroquinone. So it's, it's very effective along with these other things. It's, this whole hyperpigmentation kit works beautifully. These are some before and afters um, uh, using the hyperpigmentation. It works in all skin colors. Works best in lighter colors, but it can work in African Americans as well. One of the basic ingredients that sets uh, Skin Medica apart from other things is this product called TNS, or Tissue Nutrient Solution. What is it? Um, they have a proprietary blend called Nuracell MD, which has growth factors, vitamins, soluble collagen, matrix proteins, and antioxidants. Um, it's clinically pro proven to enhance skin texture, reduce wrinkles, age spots, improve uh, skin firmness. This is very much different than what you could get at a Dillard's, for example. These are physician-grade products that really work differently and much more effectively than anything you can get you know, at, at, a, at a store. Um, not to bore you, these are some of the growth factors that are in there for you who are scientifically inclined. I'm happy to give you a copy of this at the end. And these are what they are, these are what they do. Um, so it's, there's a lot of stuff in there. Um, this is the, the, the latest thing they have. It's been around for a while. It's called the Essential Serum. It's basically, you know, if you were to get one product from, from Skin Medica, what would, you, what would I recommend? Probably this, the, tis, the, the uh, Essential Serum, because it's got everything. It's got the TNS, um, you know, for fine lines, wrinkles, improves the tone and the texture of the skin, smooths and fill in fine lines. Um, what are, the, what are the key ingredients? Uh, the Neurocell that we talked about, the TNS, the CoQ10, um, tocopherol, uh, blackberry, green tea, GABA, hyaluronic filling spheres. Um, and I think, it's, I think it's awesome. It's a dual uh, chamber pump that has these two things. So in that thing, there's two pumps. When you pump it, both things come out. One is the, uh, the TNS recovery complex, and the other one is the antioxidant. When you put it on your skin, this is what it looks like. Uh, the one on the outside is the TNS, and the inside is the, uh, the, the other peptide that's in there. So just rub it in, and uh, it works very well. Um, the other thing that Skin Medica has is the vitamin E and the C complex, which is, which is great for uh, improving skin tone and texture and firmness. Uh, the night eye repair, which is wonderful. Um, The next thing we're going to jump to is the cosmetic injectables. Now this thing has just gone through the roof in the last 10 years. I mean, you know, started with Botox, then you've got all your fillers, and then phew, it's just, it's like, what's the filler of the month? You know, the new one's being made all the time. So it's like, what do you pick? So what are the, what are the categories of injectables, you know? Um, there are the toxins, which Botox is, is, is the most common. It temporarily paralyzes muscles and leaves the patient unable to fully contract treated muscles. And then there are fillers that temporarily improve, that um, temporarily fill under wrinkles or adds volume. And then there's stimulators that stimulate the patient's own collagen to grow and restore volume. And we're going to talk about these. So, uh, so we're talking about injectables. So they're, they're getting some blood from my finger. Um, checking for lactate. Uh, you bicycle like crazy and then they check your lactic level every five minutes and they plot it on a graph versus how hard you're pedaling. So it's kind of like um, how diabetics check their finger. You know, it's the same machine. So they, they prick your finger and then they put that little machine on and then within a minute they get a reading, which is really cool. This is how Lance Armstrong was training, which is really neat. He'll do it on the road or he'll do it in the lab. So this, this is from an alphabet book from the, for the middle-aged. 
right? Botox, B is for Botox. So we're going to talk about that. Um, most of you know about Botox. It's been around for a long time, right? It comes like this. Uh, there's different versions of botulinum toxin that have recently come out, and they're all fairly good. You know, <laughs> wrinkles look cute on a dog, but not on a person, right? So. Uh, we call these the, the 11s. That's really what it's made to treat. Uh, it's FDA approved for this area, but we also use it in the forehead and the crow's feet area and some other areas as well. So it's, it's extremely effective. Botox works by binding to the nerve endings and preventing the release of uh, transmitters that make the muscle stimulated. So if the muscle is not being stimulated, it's not working. So in effect, you're chemically paralyzing the muscle temporarily. And that's how it works. What does Bot uh, so this is a, a little graph of what Botox can and can't do, right? There's a lot of things it can do, but there's some things that are misconceptions that it can't do. What does it do? It treats underlying cause of wrinkles. The underlying cause of wrinkles is the muscle action. You know, if I'm frowning, I'm using muscles to do that. You know, if I'm having crow's feet, I'm using muscles to do that. So if I temporarily weaken the muscles, it, it softens the lines. Um, it does cause the age to be less angry looking as a result, and it does disappear in two to four months. Doesn't last forever, right? Hopefully we're going to come out with a better Botox that lasts longer, but right now we don't have one. What does it not do? It doesn't fill in wrinkles. So somebody comes to me and says, oh, I've got this, I want, to, I want Botox. Well, you don't want Botox in there. You want a filler in that area. Um, it doesn't plump up the lips. You don't put Botox into the lips. Uh, it doesn't get rid of deep wrinkles. You know, sometimes you need a filler to, to get rid of deep wrinkles, or you may need surgery. Um, and it does not treat loose skin, okay? Are we clear about that? Okay. These are the different points where Botox can be placed in the face, okay? Um, traditionally, it's for A, B, A and B area, where the, where the frowning is. That's, that's what it's been FDA approved for. But I use it commonly in the crow's feet area and also in the forehead. Some people use it in the upper lips. I've, I've used it very judiciously in the upper lips. You have to be careful. If you put too much, the person can't talk very well. They start drooling. They look like a stroke patient, and that's bad. <laughs> so, you know, be very careful about putting it in the lips. Um, I, I try to stay away from that area. It says, sis, I'm not so sure if you're surprised, shocked, upset, or just in a Botox state of mind. You know, people think that if you put Botox, then you have one particular look and you're just staring off into space and you lose all animation of your face. Depends how it's used, it depends how much you put in, um, and you have to be careful. This is a patient of mine, just to show you before and afters, before Botox on the left, and then I'm asking her to frown and she can't, which is cool. So the lines get softer. Same thing, I'm asking her to raise her forehead and she can't, so these lines get softer. So that's the principle of Botox. Here's another one, crow's feet, before and after. Okay? So those are the three areas where it's very effective. It's fantastic. Now, we're going to jump into fillers, right? So this is a totally different category. What do fillers do? Let's go back to basic science, right? The skin has two layers, the epidermis on the outside, and the dermis on the inside, and then fat and muscle and everything underneath that. What happens is sometimes there are depressions in the epidermis and dermis, and the idea is to put a filler underneath it that kind of plumps it out and works almost like a jack to, to lift it up. That's the principle behind fillers, okay? She has, she's had great filler right there. Lisa Rinna, right? Very attractive lady. This is overdoing it, right? <laughs> you don't want that. She's had a little too much surgery, cat woman, right? We don't want to do that. Um, you know, collagen came out first. You had to have skin testing. You had to wait 30 days before you had it, so the skin test was negative. It didn't last very long. I put it in my wife's lips once. It disappeared, what, two days, one day? Yeah. It just disappeared. I mean, it, it was kind of useless. Um, so then the next class that came along, you know, when I trained, it was, it was just... Um, uh, collagen, and then when I got into private practice, then the hyaluronic acids came out, which wasn't that long ago. FDA approved them for cosmetic use in 2003 to the smile lines. There's no skin testing required, and it lasts three to even more than 12 months. So these are good products. I mean, um, we've all used them. I've used them myself. I think they're fantastic.